So we travel back up north to Ensenada, right in the middle of the city, where we meet this interesting fella. We're gonna talk right now to a man named Robert, who actually is a beekeeper here in the middle of Ensenada. Robert, how did you get into beekeeping? Uh, well, it started with my grandfather. He brought all, all his uh, knowledge men from Jalisco. He told me, one day, if you want this, you can have it. But then he gave it to a cousin of mine. Oh no. My cousin got married. And he forgot about the bees. Yeah, he forgot about the bees. And one day he told me, hey, so I have a family now and I have bees. I can't take care of both of them. Right, it's so one or the so other. So <laughs> he told me, you take care of them. And whenever you have a harvest, uh, just give me a liter of honey and that's it. Wow. And you you took it. And I took the deal. The, uh, the knowledge your grandfather gave you, did that help to be able to handle the bees when you got them from your cousin? Uh, it didn't help me that much, but a few things. You had to learn more yeah, after I, that. I had to learn more. I've seen, I'm a lazy reader. But Let me guess, you too. Yeah. <laughs> so I've learned a lot of things from them. And then I have a friend here that he's from Zacatecas. Right. And he taught me a few other things, how to make my apiary grow, grow faster. You know what? It's, it's, it's unique. It's strange, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> to have a bee farm in the middle of the city, yeah. but it's cool as well. So I mean, we want to see what you got. Yeah. Can we go see it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to get to see his bee farm right here in his house. Let's go. Let's go see it. Just hope you're not afraid of heights. I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm kind of, kind of heavy and these things look kind of flimsy. What so, are we seeing here? So like, I have a view of the city, but the bees, they have the best view. They have the best view. Man, poor burglar, if somebody ever comes by in the middle of the night. Yeah, <laughs> now, our, our family has a shopping center and we used to get a lot of burglars to go up on the roof uh -huh. and steal like the copper wire. Uh -huh. So I told my, my uncle, hey, why don't I put up some beehives right where they come up? <laughs> Perfect plan. No way, no way. The first day I put them up, yeah. I went the next day, and one of the lids were broken uh -huh. because the burglar thought it was a step or a, some kind of box oh and he put his, his foot on top of the, the lid. He must have paid the price for that. Yeah, his jeans were left. <laughs> <laughs> the jeans, he took off his jeans yeah, and he, ran. Yeah, he ran. Well, you know, it serves him better. They're, and they're better than guard dogs. Guard dogs, <laughs> you can jump a fence, the dog will stop. How but, far will bees chase you? Uh, the aggressive ones, they can chase you out to 100 meters, 200. No way. All this bee stink talk has motivated me to wear the right attire. Well, we're gonna get in the midst of these bees. Let's hope that these work and are an actual deterrent or layer of protection for these bees. Robert, I'm putting myself in your hands, in your hands and in this suit's hands. Do I need pants or is this is this it? Yeah, that's it. The, the pants, no, no, no. Yeah, they will, no, cover most of the stinks. <laughs> most of the stinks? <laughs> Man, I'm not wearing any socks underneath the sneakers. Hopefully they don't squeeze in there. We're not provoking them, right? Or No, we're gonna... This is just preventive. We're gonna be using the, the smoker. So what does that do? It, it doesn't make him angry? Uh, the, the smoker prevents the hive from, uh, from signaling their alert signal. Really? So the, the smoke comes them down and makes all the, the whole hive docile. Oh, okay. Captain, we're seeing a hive of hostile insectoid beings about to rush. Oh, ship. Shields up, Scotty. Shields up. Sorry, Mr. Shatner. These are our shields. Let's hope that they're enough. We have a bet going on between the crew here. Who gets stung first? Uh, I'm putting the full suit on because me and her are allergic. So we have two beekeepers here that are both allergic to bee stings. Better safe than sorry. They're kamikazes. That's what yeah. they are. Yeah, well, she looks like the Virgin Mary right there with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Rescue team is getting ready suited up, getting getting focused, getting ready. Let's try to be protected. Okay, so we're geared up and ready to go. The entrance, triumphant. The exit, frantic and jumping. Forty-five years old. I'm not as flexible as I used to. Oh. Do bees attack any other insects, or they don't? Uh, they they attack intruders. Like okay. each hive 
uh -huh. have their own unique scent. And if a bee tries to go into another one, oh, there are wow. guard bees in the entrance. Oh my goodness. They attack her and tell her, hey, you're, you're not in your house. You okay. have to go to your house. Oh, gotcha. It will happen. Yeah, and eventually you get bumble, bumblebees or those green bumblebees. Beetles. Yeah, and you see a couple dead on the, on the oh, ground. Oh, they were attacked? They were attacked by that. No by the way. Hive. Check it out, guys. If you want to see what happens to intruders, that poor beetle down there. Look at this poor bugger. Came too close to a beehive and got stung to death. You know, their stings are not reserved for mammals or humans. You know, if you're an insect and get too close, guess what? Time to check out of the earth. Your time here is over. So when you take the top off, they don't they don't get mad immediately off that. No, uh, bees react to vibrations. Okay. So if you hit the, the hive, that'll they, make them angry. They'll stop coming out of it. Okay. I put this frame about a month ago. Each wood is a frame? Yes. So they're bringing in honey on this one. Where's the honey? Is it inside the combs? Yes. How many sides does what, yes. each one of those combs have? Just wow. put it right, right against the, the mesh. Yeah. You can try it. Delicious. <laughs> Perfect shapes that they make, right? Yeah. Geometric shapes. They're hexagons, right? Yeah, and they hold, they hold up a lot of weight. I mean, these frames, each one can weigh about two or three kilos. Okay. Once, you, once it's full of honey, yeah. once you bring it's it out. Yeah, once it's full of honey. And, and these, are, these are normal frames. Mm -hmm. These are 10 frames that can load up, up, up to six or seven kilos. Of oh, it. wow. That's almost 10 pounds. So, so we're going to open up the main hive. Oh, wow. If you guys can see, there's a bunch trying to get into my face. So if you want to see the valley of these beehive suits, I mean, just look at literally in front of my nose. Look at how many are trying to proactively trying to get in. Because they're smelling the honey. That's why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, hey, you grabbed something. This, this bear, this oso is stealing our honey. This is the, the main frame where they keep their brood and their babies and everything. But when you take out honey, you never take honey out of this frame because this is their food. They okay. need to, to feed the, their, lar their larvae. Okay. So where do you get it out from? The middle you get, ones? You get it out from those. Oh, you never get it from the bottom? No. Never? No. Oh, okay. So the bottom one is their food. Yes. This is like extra. Yes. And actually bees, they, they gather up the honey and the nectar from flowers uh -huh. because it's their food to uh, survive on winter. Wow. Now, is there a time of year where you stop collecting uh, honey or do you, you, can, you, can you extract all year round? No, uh, we can extract from, from March until pro down here, probably until to September or mid-October uh -huh. and that's it. And then you stop? Yeah, you have to and stop. And you begin again when? Next March until March. Yeah. The main frame that you took, how long does it take for that to fill? Like right now we're, we're in a drought season. Okay. Um, so there's not enough uh, flowers for them. If they were up there in New Orleans or Georgia. Where there's more flowers. There's a lot of more flowers and it rains more over there. They can fill up this thing in a week. No way. <laughs> yeah. And They're hard workers. And, and you're calling about 40, 50 pounds of honey. So this, this is their food. You don't, we don't take this, right? No. This is all their food. They have larvae in here. You see bees here? Yeah. They're, they're cleaning the hexagon because that's where a bee came out recently. They clean their own house. Oh, they, so, they... so the queen can go by and put on our larvae. In no here. way. There's bee cleaners who clean the hexagons, yeah. make sure it's nice and tidy, and then the queen will go in and fill it with a larva. Yeah. You see here, this is a drone. This big one right here. What does the drone do? It mates with the queen. <laughs> okay. And it only works for mating and eating honey. That's it. That's, That's it. a stud right there. Yeah. Aren't those the guys that have to chase the queen? Yeah. And then they die outside? Yeah, they die outside. Their uh, reproductive system, it breaks off and stays in the queen. Wow. So they die after. Put your fingers <laughs> like this or your hand like this. Okay. Just straight like this. It's crossing south, folks. Don't go anywhere. Look at these little guys. Hard workers giving humanity an example of how to be industrious, how to be clean, how to do a good job. Mommy and daddy ain't doing the dishes for them. Take a lesson from the bees. When the sun comes out, we all gotta hustle, including these amazing creatures. Hey folks, quick interruption, travel tip right now. When you cross to Mexico, your insurance does not cover you when you drive down. 
So one of the people you can call are the guys from Baja Bound Insurance. They're a new sponsor of the show, but we've known them for over 10 years. Even before they were our sponsors, we were using them when we're crossing south for our vehicles. They even got us out of trouble when we got into a little fender bender for crossing south for real. This is no joke. So use them, Baja Bound Insurance. We're giving them a shout out. Hope you use them and hope they help you too. We all got to hustle, including these amazing creatures. So this is, you know, exhilarating. It's, it's, it's amazing. Just to be close to this, this is the kind of thing that you see on TV for years. You never think, you know, that this is possible without being an expert, which I am not. So Robert is guiding us here, uh, showing us what to do and what not to do. But I just feel privileged. I feel privileged and honored to be with these uh, hardworking bees, a noble animal that is so essential for the survival of the human species. Can you believe that? This right here. And some people think this is just by chance. You know, without these guys, we die. <laughs> Seems very convenient. There's a lot of things that keep us alive in the universe, in the cosmos, and on Earth. Seems like a lot of coincidences just to keep us alive. So look at that honey right there. Is that wax? Is that wax? No, that's honey. It's all honey. That's honey and wax. If I want to in induce them into eating their honey, yeah, I can do this. And they'll start eating it. Yes, they'll go <laughs> directly to it. Sweet, delicious honey. They're like, we grew up with this all day, but more gobble, 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 gobble. Look at it, look at that drip. Look, is it one queen per box or is there's queen for all of them? Just one, but there's some unique times. There's one working with, with uh, the new queen or with the old queen. And they eventually they kick her out or they have a fight until death. No way. The queen bee also has a sting, but instead of like the worker bees, uh -huh. the sting, it's like a bob wire, but the sting on the queen is smooth. It's smooth. Yeah. So she can sting many times. The queen bee doesn't sting a human. There are only a really rare occasion that it sting a person. Okay. But they normally they don't sting. What they do is they grab the nectar. Yeah and they put it into the, the hexagon. They swallow up and they work it inside the bee stomach and then they pull it out. They swallow it again. They're breaking it down, taking all the water out of the nectar okay. and inducing it into, into sugar, which it's called honey. That's natural honey. It's bee vomit. <laughs> like this year has been a really hard year for most of the beekeepers here in Baja and also in California. Because there's not a lot of flowers? There's not a lot of flowers. There's a drought season. Mm -hmm. Got a friend in LA. She's struggling. She's feeding them sugar water. No way. I also feed them sugar water, but there's a special frame that you can put inside. Uh huh. And they, you can feed them internally because you can feed them externally, but they, the bucket doesn't need to be closed up the highs. Yeah, I'm going to push them back into the box. You eating, little buddy? Nice little bees. Nice bees. What wonderful lessons in industriousness and hard work nature teaches us. We can learn a lot from nature. Yes, he's showing us how how you set up the machine to extract the honey from the panels. Right now, it's just mimicking, just showing how I do it. So you have your timer here, five minutes. That's how long it takes? Fire time. it up, yeah. see what it is. So, so what, what happens when it spins, where does it, where does it throw the honey to? Uh, it goes to the wall, and then it slips down the wall into that channel down below. Uh, and it, and I'll do, I do it at night, because at night the bees don't fly, so okay. I don't have to worry about the bees. <laughs> Them coming. So, coming over here. You got our stuff, man. Yeah. Look at that, look at it go. Well, are we gonna take some honey right now, Robert? Yes. Let's go to it. The black honey is uh, honey from, from winter. Oh, so okay. So this, this is extracted at the last week of February into March. Okay. And this is what you get out of the hive. It has more enzymes, has more vitamins. It makes it also black uh, because there's less of flowers in winter. The bees, they uh, mix it up with uh, propolis. So this one is lighter. This one is from summer. Summer, summer. Yeah, summerish. And you can see on the bottom, it's starting to crystallize. Okay, So <laughs> that's normal. The process of crystallizing is the natural process of the honey. If you have a honey on your shelf and you never see it crystallize, it's, it's not. It's fake honey. Wow. Is there a way to 
turn this into into, into like, solid again. Yeah. You just put the the jar next to the window with the lid closed but not tight. Uh huh. And the uh, natural rays of the sun will melt it. Will melt it back. Oh, okay. To a natural state. Can I try that? Yes. There are different flavors. You can smell this, and the smell it's sugarish, but it also has the smell of wax. If you have honey in your shelf and it doesn't smell like wax, it's not real honey. It's not real honey. Mm. Nurturing. Wow. Yes. Now you can tilt the you can tilt the jar and grab a spoon of the bottom part and it has a different texture and a different flavor. It's a different texture, different flavor. It's more consistent. Yeah. Mm. Almost like a cream. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Such different taste. Now you mm. see why bears open the hives up? Yes. <laughs> I am an oso. I'm a bear, so. I understand why. <laughs> Let me try the winter one. The winter one, the taste is stronger. Very strong. Yeah. Okay. Let's try this tonic. And you can feel the propolis in the flavor. Okay. So let's see what the propolis tastes like. It's not bad. Mm. It's also good. Yeah. I am a bear, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because I liked all of it. <laughs> We, we came here for bees. We're finding hidden <laughs> treasures. What, what year is this car? This is a 1931 Model A. Well, it's a really tough cookie. She is driving this car. <laughs> yeah, my dad used to drive it to the weddings, but he has a problem with his eyesight now. He can't drive anymore like that? Yeah, he can't drive it at night. Do you drive this? So I drive it. Wow. I'm the driver for the weddings now. Let's open up the hood, see what this baby's got in there. Oh. Whoa. 1931, imagine that. The advent of the motor vehicle is one of humanity's accomplishments, that's for sure. Whoa! <laughs> that's so cool! You can smell the... Is it normal gas or diesel? Normal gas. Normal gas? Yeah. Amazing, it feels smooth. I would have thought it would be more clunking, but no, this, this sounds, sounds smooth. Hey, you watching this show. I'm glad you liked the video. Now, if you could please like the video and subscribe, share it with your friends, turn on notifications. It really helps a lot. If you like Baja, if you like what you're doing, if you want us to make more videos, please help us. Thank you. Enjoy Baja. Crossing South. Crossing South. Crossing South.